how, how do you thank somebody for that? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you, and other people aren't. There was a story from people that got out, survivors, that somebody helped them. They didn't know who he was. They couldn't see his face. They had a red bandana over his mouth and his nose. Now, that had been going on, you know, we didn't know whether it was, was it a myth? Was it something that people imagined? Without him, that particular moment, I would be crushed or buried. As the 16th anniversary of September 11th approaches, we remember the heroes of that horrible day, heroes like Wells Remy Crowther. Wells worked in the World Trade Center, but had always wanted to be a fighter, fighter, firefighter and always carried a red bandana. He was killed on September 11th, but after the towers collapsed, survivors reported being saved by a man in a red bandana, and it happened to be Wells. His story is now being shown in select theaters across the U.S. in a brand new documentary called The Man in the Red Bandana. Joining us now is the writer and director of the film, Matthew Weiss, and Wells' mother, Allison Crowther. Thank you both very much for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you for Allison, obviously September 11th, it, it impacted so many of us, you personally uh, and powerfully. What does it mean to have the story of your son told this way? It's really astonishing. Uh, it, uh, Matthew's done such an incredibly beautiful job researching, spending many years following the story, and, and it's just such a powerful vision of of, of what happened that day, and it's a wonderful uh, tribute to our son. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. tribute to our son. You Matthew, know, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say the story is uh, my daughter went to Boston College where your son went, and so this is a legendary story, but you didn't know for the longest time that your son, who always wanted to be a firefighter, actually, when he had the opportunity to go to safety, he went back and kept trying to rescue more and more people. At what point did you realize what your son had done, that he died a hero that day? Well, uh, well I really didn't know. We didn't know anything until uh, I read the article in the New York Times and there were reports there that uh, there was this mysterious man wearing a red kerchief, a, a red handkerchief, a red bandana, all these references. Wells was actually, he was an equities trader with Sam O'Neill and Partners, right. but he was also a fully trained volunteer firefighter, so he had the skills and knowledge to be calm right. and to know what to do. And so when you saw, when you read in the New York Times, red bandana, red kerchief, you thought, that's my son. That's right. I right away, I just, and, and put together with that, that he was setting up a triage basically calling out fire medic okay, instruction I just I said oh well I found you <laughs> yeah I oh. found you so Matthew how did you learn about the story and why did you decide to do a documentary on it so I never made a film before I never read a book on filmmaking I never took a class on filmmaking but I went to perfect <laughs> <laughs> exactly but I had the passion I went to lunch with Jeff Crowther Allison's husband and he told me she he told me the story about his, um, this, his son and I was just blown away. I said to myself, what an amazing story. Everyone needs to hear this story. I want to share this story with everyone. What were some of the people that he saved? What were they saying in the documentary when you well, interviewed them? Well, they were saying that, follow me, I know the way, mm -hmm. um, that he was putting out fires, he extricated people that were trapped. He actually carried a woman on his shoulder down 17 flights and then went back up, mm -hmm. let another group down, and then went back up a third time. Wow, Allison, this red bandana, what did it symbolize? Obviously, it was an identifier mm -hmm. uh, in that article, but what did it symbolize before? Well, I think to Wells, uh, it was a connection to his father. It was something that my husband had given to him when he was a very little boy. We were getting ready for church, and Wells had a little gray suit and said, Daddy, can I have a white handkerchief like you have? And, and my husband said, sure. So he went to get a white handkerchief, and then he just grabbed a red bandana just he, does, he even says he doesn't know why he just grabbed it and gave Wells, folded up, put it in his pocket and said, now Wells, this bandana, that's for show. I mean, excuse me, this handkerchief, that's for show. Don't touch it. Leave it right there. Here's a bandana. That's for blow. You keep that blowing your nose, messy job. <laughs> keep it in your back pocket. And he just then always had it with him yeah. uh, under his helmets for sports. Mm -hmm. Always, and he was actually teased quite a lot over the years. Now, when you learned mm -hmm. about, when you saw the plane and we all heard the news that, that morning, your son's working in the building. I read somewhere that he called you to say, Mom, I'm okay. Is that yes. true? Yes, he did. So you thought, my son's coming out. Everything's going to be fine. I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure because the scene was so, oh, just so horrible. I was in a, a vice president of sales for a company in that, at that time, and so I was in my office. We didn't have a television. They were trying to get a radio going. The scene mm -hmm. just seemed too 
horrible. Mm -hmm. And and when when I heard the report about the first tower coming down, I just knew inside that Wells was gone. And what's it like for you to hear the words of the men and women who he helped save? It's amazing. It's such a beautiful thing for us to to know that Wells saved people, saved their lives, and and Matthew through his research has uncovered many more people that we even we only really knew of Ling and Ling Young and Judy Ween mm -hmm. who we mm -hmm. saved. Um, but Matthew found many others that reported that. I would imagine as a mother the hardest thing about losing your child or one of the hardest things would be not being there when they die and yep. not being able to say goodbye. Um, does this bring you some solace? Yes, yeah, it does. Um, really, m most of all in the scene, and we're so, we're so proud of him for his actions and what he chose to do that day, but to me, the greater, if you can even say happiness in the story, which there really isn't, I mean, there's a lot of wonderfulness in the story, mm -hmm. but when we learned that he was able to actually make his choices that day on how he could be, and that he chose to do what he did. Yeah. That he had that freedom. That was the mm -hmm. most. And that's what makes this film a very special film because it is very sad. Your heart sure. will break at points, but then when you find out what he did that day, you can't help but be inspired and uplifted. Absolutely. And then you find out throughout the country that Wells is honored. There are babies all over the country named after him, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we reveal the secret about Wells. I'm not going to spoil it here, mm -hmm. but we share this amazing secret about Wells that people, when they've watched the film, have gone, wow. Mm -hmm. Did not Very know cool. that. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, we'll know the secret tomorrow. That's yeah, yeah. And wait, and this is for you guys. Aww. Aww. There you go. I noticed you you're wearing much. one. Yes, so thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Right. God bless you. We wish you all the best. I know it's not easy. man in a red bandana. Yes, thank you. He would have been 40 years old. Correct. He was 24 right. when God he died. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be watching, definitely.